We traditionalists understandably focus a lot of attention on the growth and prospects of the traditional Latin Mass. And despite Traditionis Custodis, I personally believe the outlook for the traditional Mass has never been brighter. Francis's 2021 Modu Proprio coming, as it did after decades of steady growth in TLM communities, is too little too late an attempt to close the proverbial barn door after the horses are already out. It's only a matter of time before the powers that be recognize this and something akin to Samorum Pontificum is reinstituted. Such is my hope and belief, at least. But in this video, I'd like to speak not of the traditional Latin Mass, but rather the current state of the Novus Ordo, because I believe it is not the TLM, but the so-called Reverend Novus Ordo that is most imperiled by current developments. The pontificate of Paul VI ushered in a period of liturgical chaos that has been well documented. So great was the disorder that even many who were sympathetic to the conciliar reform believed things had gotten out of hand. A correction was needed. Not a restoration of the pre-conciliar order, mind you, no, but a correction that could walk the church back from the brink of chaos while staying true to the intentions of the Council Fathers. The Novus Ordo was a deviation from the traditional Latin Mass, but within the Novus Ordo world there was a further split between those who favored the correction and those who did not. Those who thought the reform had gone too far and those who thought it had not gone far enough. And indeed, many of the latter believed that the deconstruction of the 70s had, had not been extreme enough. But the correction was favored by both John Paul II and Benedict XVI. And during the combined 35-year pontificates of these two men, the party of the correction, which I will term the reform of the reform, enjoyed at least the theoretical support of Rome. I say theoretical because JP II and Benedict only supported the reform of the reform in writing, doing almost nothing to back up their pronouncements in action. But at least reform of the reform proponents could justify their arguments with an appeal to Rome. Even if the Roman pontiffs did little to curb actual liturgical abuse, and in many cases even contributed to it, it could not be denied that the weight of John Paul II and Benedict XVI stood behind the reform of the reform. And this gave proponents of the Reverend Novus Ordo an intellectual home. It also was a significant morale booster. Even if the landscape was chaotic at home, one could at least take comfort in knowing that Rome had your back. After all, the good guys were in charge. Reform of the Reform was thus a respectable via media that enjoyed a papal imprimatur. It's interesting to contrast this with the traditional Latin Mass, which never needed papal approbation to find an intellectual home. And this is because the TLM is not a policy, it's a heritage. It exists independent of the popes, and while it may benefit from papal support, it is neither a creation of the papacy nor dependent upon it for its vitality or integrity. The Reverend Novus Ordo, on the other hand, is completely dependent upon hierarchical support for its continued existence. Would the movement to correct the Novus Ordo have had any vitality, if not paid lip service by JP II and Benedict XVI? It's hard to see how. Like the eponymous character in Weekend at Bernie's, the Reverend Novus Ordo continues to exist only so long as there are men of influence willing to prop it up. Now this is why the landscape has changed so dramatically since 2013. There is no longer an intellectual home for the reform of the reform. Rome is hostile to it. Pope Francis not only opposes the TLM, but any backward-looking attempts to restore Latin, ad orientum worship, Gregorian chant, or stricter guidelines for receiving Holy Communion, all integral components of the reform of the reform platform. Francis's liturgical war may be directed against the TLM, but the Reverend Novus Ordo is taking heavy collateral damage along the way. 
It's becoming increasingly difficult to incorporate traditional elements into the Novus Ordo. Ad Orientum is a perfect case study. As early as 2020, Bishop Peter Christensen of Boise, Idaho, and also Bishop Paul Etienne of Seattle had banned Ad Orientum masses. This trend only accelerated in the wake of Traditionis Custodes when Ad Orientum was subsequently banned in Washington, D.C. The dioceses of Venice, Florida, and Chicago also banned Ad Orientum masses said without explicit permission. If you are a reform of the reformer, Rome no longer has your back, and it's increasingly likely that your local bishop does not either. The movement is also orphaned ideologically. Ask yourself, who are the intellectual luminaries of the traditional movement today? Well, it's easy to name a bunch. Athanasius Schneider, Roberto de Mattei, John Rao, Cardinal Burke, Alcuin Reed, Peter Kwasniewski, Martin Mosebach, and we could easily go on as the list is immense. Now, who are the intellectual heavyweights of the reform of the reform movement today? And George Weigel is still out there making noise, and you also have great value theologians like Mary Healy, occasionally taking pot shots at the TLM, but you will no longer find intellectuals of the caliber of Carol Wojtyla or Joseph Ratzinger among their ranks. Even Dennis Kruen, the longtime spokesperson of the French Reform of the Reform, threw in the towel this year, admitting that the Reform of the Reform was, quote, a waste of time. And of the Reform surviving proponents, I think it is noteworthy that none of them are in Rome. Not even the old EWTN and Catholic Answers Vanguard can be depended upon here. Those uh, remaining apologists and speakers who have not gone off the deep end, a la Mark Shea, are now TLM adjacent, even if they choose not to be identified publicly as traditionalists. The Reverend Novus Ordo was always a difficult proposition. This is because flux and variability are hardwired into the very framework of the new mass itself. How much ink has been spilled debating about the mass as the council intended? The plot twist here is that there is no mass as the council intended. The Novus Ordo is a chameleon by design. You take your guitar mass with 30 extraordinary ministers, and then you take the, uh, the the reverent liturgy with Latin mass parts and communion kneeling on the tongue. Both of those are the Novus Ordo, and that's what's so problematic about it. Its inherent structure is gelatinous. It becomes whatever its celebrant wants it to be. Something like this is a poor vehicle for handing on the objective content of the traditional Catholic faith. The Novus Ordo has no bones. And those who argued otherwise, who argued for a correction, could only succeed insofar as the institutional church was willing to prop up such efforts. But with institutional support for the reform dwindling to nothing, the movement for the Reverend Novus Ordo has about as much standing power as FDR's legs. But if that's true for the Reverend Novus Ordo, it's even more true for the TLM, some will say. There's even less institutional support for the TLM. Even if the Reverend Novus Ordo is rare, the TLM is being positively suppressed. Well, that's true, but the traditional mass was never dependent upon Rome for its existence, and this makes all the difference. Pope Francis may be withdrawing papal sanction from both the TLM and the Reverend Novus Ordo, but the TLM can survive without it whereas the Reverend Novus Ordo will not. The removal of life support is only terminal when the patient is depending upon it for survival. It is therefore not the TLM that is in danger of going extinct, but the Reverend Novus Ordo. But that's to be expected. The Reverend Novus Ordo has always been a via media, and like all middle positions, subject to collapse when pulled from the poles. It can only exist so long as there are men in authority invested in propping it up. And it's questionable how long there will be, at least under the current pontificate. The TLM needs no such propping up. It has already existed and flourished under every conceivable obstruction at times without any institutional support whatsoever. In the end, we must stop looking 
or the mass as the council intended and return to the mass that the council upended. Whether you are a new subscriber or a longtime supporter, I'd like to thank you for your patronage of this channel. I hope you enjoy these video essays as much as I enjoy making them. And if you like what you heard, please give us a like, share, or subscribe, and do come back again for our next video.